Somerset kept themselves right in the mix for a quarter-final place in the Friends Provident T20 South group after thumping Middlesex by 79 runs in Taunton. Neil Dexter won the toss and asked Somerset to bat on a day when Marcus Truscothic finally hit the kind of form he's been promising. Tim Murta had been hit for an early six by Truscothic, but he fought back to have Nick Compton caught at square leg in the third over. Not to be put off by that, Truscothic started hitting through the ball to very good effect. Plenty of times this season he's got a good start, but he's been waiting for a major impact in a T20 game until now. The runs were flowing freely on a good Taunton surface, with James Hildreth also finding the ropes early on in his innings. This shot for four brought the score up to 65 for one at the end of the power play. Truscothic was closing in on the fastest 100 of the season. He hit his 50 off 22 balls and had gone to 83 off 37 when he swept away Shah and was caught by Murta on the boundary. But 11 overs in, Somerset already had 128 runs on the board. Truscothic had said that his side could score 250 this summer at Taunton, but they didn't fully make the most of their incredible start. Kyron Pollard had made only one when he hit his third ball off a Shah long hop out to Gareth Berg. Xander de Brain was bowled by Tom Smith as he tried to run a delivery down to third man. And then Hildreth on 48 was given out leg before, although he did appear to be hit outside the line. With 15 overs gone, Somerset had moved on to 151 for five, having scored only 23 off the previous four overs. But Aral Safira and Josh Butler ensured that the innings finished strongly. After fighting back so well, the Middlesex bowlers were sometimes guilty of putting the ball on the spot for the Somerset batsmen to swing through the line. And as they did so, 53 runs were scored off the last five overs to take the home side to 204 for five. So Middlesex needed to get off to a flyer and Scott Newman, who opened with debutant Jackson Thompson, who was in for David Warner, tried to make sure that that happened as they opened up with a partnership of 31 towards the end of the fifth over. Newman perished as he tried to pull a short ball from Mark Turner and top-edged it back to the bowler. Middlesex struggled to keep up with a rate of more than 10 runs per over, but Shah and Thompson at least did keep their side in the game by keeping wickets in hand as they added 42 to take the total to 73 in the ninth over. But with that run rate required on the rise, wickets were bound to fall. Thompson was bowled by Morley Carter as he was another to go to the reverse sweep on 32. Shah fell two overs later, stumped by a distance for 26. And he was soon followed by Dawa Milan, another to be bowled, and Dexter, who was yorked by Turner, leaving Middlesex in real trouble on 101 for five. 104 more runs were still needed of 39 deliveries. With Tyron Henderson still there, there was always a very slim chance of a miracle. But when Berg was brilliantly caught by Thomas off this shot, and Henderson mishit to Brain to Pollard when on 17, the game was up for them. The last few wickets fell in a flash. Ben Scott edged Thomas behind for one. Murta drilled the first ball he faced straight back to Pollard, who then showed him the way back to the pavilion. And Pedro Collins fell next ball, edging a delighted Pollard behind as Middlesex collapsed from 73 for one to 125 all out, with 14 balls still remaining. The win put Somerset in third place in the group with 14 points, while Middlesex continue to look for consistency. They're certainly not out of the running yet, with 10 points from 11 matches.